Hey guys, Richard Holden here and welcome to the channel. Here are two questions for you. One, inch and three quarter versus inch and seven eighths headers. Which one makes more power on your LS? Also, full exhaust. Does it hurt power or does it help it? In this video, we're going to take a look at a header comparison I did while comparing two different camshafts. We ran the Brian Tuley Racing Truck Norris cam and the new Sloppy Best cam. While I had those on the dyno doing the cam test, I also ran very cool header tests. We compared inch and three quarter headers versus inch and seven eighths headers. And I also compared the effect of collector extension on both of these camshafts. Lots of good data. Check it out. Let's jump right in here and we'll take a look at our comparison between inch and seven eighths long tube headers and inch and three quarter long tube headers and then the effect of the collector length extension because we're taking a look specifically at this RPM range down here down in the 2000 to 2500 or maybe 3000 range. We're also going to see what effect the power has in other parts of the RPM range. A lot of guys out there will tell you, hey, inch and seven eighths headers, you're going to make a lot more power than inch and three quarters. Inch and three quarter headers are just going to choke your LS. Well, we're going to see if that's actually true in this direct comparison so what we have here this was a 5.7 liter it was a an iron block 5.3 bored out to 5.7 we had rhs heads on it which were basically ported mast heads we had the stock truck intake manifold we had the stock truck throttle body. We started out with inch and seven eighths long tube headers from Hooker. They were swap headers. And then we had 18 inch collector extensions. They were three inch diameter and 18 inches long. And they were just basically extensions from the collector with no mufflers or exhaust outside of that. And what we were doing when we were running the comparison of the sloppy best cam versus the truck Norris cam, I ran this comparison with both of these camshafts. We'll be able to take a look at both of these, but this one was with the, um, this is our stock cam. So we ran this with inch and seven eighths headers and the collector extensions on the stock cam. Here's what happened when we installed our first camshaft. This was the truck Norris cam. Again, both of these with inch and seven eighths headers and short collector extensions. So you can see the the truck Norris cam obviously made a lot more power. We went over that in the previous video. The power output went from 401 up to 469 and torque was up from 432 to 462 but look at this area down here below 28 or 2900 rpm we see that the truck norris cam actually lost power compared to the stock cam so what we did was i went and tried to find a reason why that was happening so the first thing i did is we replaced the inch and seven eighths headers with inch and three quarter headers now here's what happened when we did that and we ran the inch and three quarters with the same collector extension length on it, same as the inch and seven eighths. So there was no change in that. This was just the change in headers. And the interesting thing is guys will tell you, as I said, that inch and seven eighths headers, I'll oh, make so much more power. You could pick up 20 or 25 horsepower compared to inch and three quarters. No, you can't. Take a look here. And, the, and I've tested this at different power levels and stuff. And the inch and three quarter versus inch and seven eighths always shows this kind of change because you're you're not lacking flow. You don't, don't need a bigger header for this. And you can see that First of all, we saw a big change in low speed power. So now with the inch and three quarter headers, the, the Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam um, was only making uh, only lost power compared to the stock cam below 2550. So now it, it had shifted the um, crossover point by, oh, two or 300 RPM. So also take a look here out at the top. We saw a little bit of change in power where the inch and three quarter headers actually made a little bit more torque, peak torque anyway, than the inch and seven eighths headers and then drop down a little bit. And we're talking, when I say a little bit, we're talking about two or three horsepower um, out at the very top. But we weren't done with the test yet. So what, what, I'll, what I did after this is we had the inch and three quarter headers on there and then we had the 18 inch collector extension. What I did was remove that collector extension and put another section of three inch exhaust that was about four feet long and included a set of uh, MagnaFlow straight through kind of race mufflers. So the mufflers themselves don't change the power because that would tend to affect the power out at the top of the RPM range where flow is most important, but they don't affect it versus straight tubes because we know that we've done that test before. What it did basically was change the length of the collector extension after the header. And so we saw a dramatic change in power from that. Here's what happened when we changed the collector extension length with the mufflers. 
and that's now in red. And you can see, yeah, again, we've shifted the crossover point even lower in the RPM range. So we're now we're down around 20, 23 or 2400. So we've shifted another 150 RPM. And you can see that we've gained a lot of torque compared to the inch and seven eighths headers, especially compared to the inch and seven eighths and the short collector extension. But if you take a look, also, we saw a slight drop in torque from 3600 RPM to 4400 RPM. But then after that, basically no change. What you're seeing there is a change in scavenging effect from the collector length. It's not a flow problem because that's even before the torque peak and way before the horsepower peak. So this is all a scavenging effect change that we're seeing both from the change in header primary diameter from inch and seven eighths to inch and three quarter and very much so with the collector length extension. And we see this also with um, collector designs. So the style of the collector, whether it's a merge collector, and you can play tricks with that and change this, this sort of scavenging. And it's pretty interesting stuff. So going from the inch and seven eighths with a short collector extension to the inch and three quarter with a long collector extension, we change where the two crossover by almost 500 RPM. So we improve torque essentially by 500 RPM by having a, um, a length of collector extension on there and, and an exhaust, which is more, more, uh, certainly going to be when guys run these kinds of camshafts, they're usually going to have a full exhaust. It's almost nobody is going to run, uh, an open header and just a collector extension length like we do on the engine now. They're always going to have an exhaust system on there. So it shows that the camshaft, if anything, is even more effective when you run them the way that you run them in the vehicle. So now let's take a look at the same comparison, but with the sloppy best cam. We've demonstrated the difference in power between the inch and seven eighths and inch and three quarter headers, and then what happens to the power curve when we change the collector length extension on the Brian Tuley Racing Truck Norris cam. So let's see what happened when we did the same test on the sloppy best cam, a little bit more uh, duration and lift and a little bit more aggressive cam. So we'll see if we have the same kind of results. This again was our stock uh, cam. This was a 5.7 liter with the RHS heads and the truck manifold and truck throttle body run first with inch and seven eighths headers and the short collector extension on our stock motor, 401 horsepower, 432 foot pounds. But here's what happened when we installed the, the sloppy best cam, picked up a lot of power of the top 482 horsepower, 462 foot pounds. But again, and even more so than with the smaller uh, BTR truck Norris cam, we see a loss in low speed power. In fact, it's um, the best cam made less power than the stock cam from 3100 on down. So let's see how we can affect that part of the curve and see what happens elsewhere, obviously, by doing the same kind of test that we did with the truck Norris cam. So we went from this is with inch and seven eighths headers and the short collector extension on the, on the sloppy cam and on the stock cam. Here's what happened when we replaced the inch and seven eighths headers with inch and three quarter headers. And so we see a similar thing that we saw with the truck Norris cam. We see that now we've shifted the crossover point from 3100 back down to 2900. So we've changed it by 200 RPM. We picked up low speed power from the smaller headers. And really it had, like it did with the, the truck Norris cam, it had very little effect on power elsewhere. It seemed to indicate a little bit more power um, in the peak torque area but not very much one or two and seem to lose a little bit of power at the top. Again, three horsepower or so um, and only past 6,000 RPM. So you can see that the inch and three quarter headers are not holding this combination back. You probably wouldn't be able to feel <laughs> three horsepower on the top at 6,500 RPM. You would definitely feel this, this change down here, down low. But now let's see what happened when we did the same thing. We replaced the short collector extension with the longer collector extension and the muffler on the uh, sloppy best cam. So again, it's a similar deal that, that these things are working the same way basically with both camshafts. Now we saw a big change in a big gain in low speed power from the longer collector extension. We've shifted it back another 250 RPM. 
where the crossover between the two is. So we picked up a bunch of low speed power from the longer collector extension. We did see a slight drop down in the middle like we did with the same test on the Truck Norris cam. So from 3700 RPM out to 4700 RPM, we saw a little bit of a dip in power. Um, not really much of a change out on the top from the longer collector extension, basically made the same power as the inch and three quarter and short collector extension. So we're not seeing a, a flow change or a, a power change from having the longer exhaust on there. It obviously flows just as well as the other setup did. But we do see, again, this is a scavenging effect and we're seeing a, you know, an increase in low speed power, a slight dip in the, before we get to the torque peak. And then from there on out, everything is kind of the same. So this kind of shows you what happens when we run an inch and three quarter header versus an inch and seven eighths header. And also what happens when you run, basically you'd be better off kind of showing here, you'd be better off with a full exhaust after the header. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, looks like we did a little header myth busting today. We found out that, hey, inch and three quarter header versus inch and seven eighths headers, you're not going to get big gains. There's no 20 or 25 horsepower from the bigger header. So if you have inch and three quarter headers or you want inch and three quarter headers, obviously they work very well. In fact, an argument can be made if you're looking for a daily driver kind of thing and you want more low speed power, the inch and three quarter header, probably the way to go. Also, long exhaust, full collector extensions, having a full exhaust on your vehicle is even more beneficial than having a short collector extension like we run on the dyno. Armature older, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.